morning and so we have uh, studied weak formulations of various equations by Laplacian stock system in addition to the standard problems uh, of Laplacian and all that with the various boundary conditions Neumann like that. So, whenever you get a the message is that so whenever you have an equation in divergence form try to put it in a weak formulation and as I said this is important to check strong solution implies weak solution, weak solution with regularity implies strong solution and then try to derive the estimate that will eventually prove the uniqueness. And you also see that immediately you do not get a uniqueness you may have to replace your spaces with small small things like uh, Neumann condition you see with uh, cautions in the stock system uh, with the real numbers and stock system also the pressure is only defined up to a constant you can fix by demanding that constant integral of p is equal to 0. You can fix any other constant, but you have the uniqueness uh, in the L2 quotient uh, out of by the real lines. So, such things you have to do it. Now, what we are going in, the, in this lecture is proving some regularity. So, the regularity is an another important and harder aspect of proving uh, thing. So, you are proving the solutions in some solo space. The idea why regularity, regularities are required for further analysis on that many many applications you need better regularity and then only you can carry out a, you, your analysis one aspect. Second thing by proving it is in a better and better uh, sublo spaces you will also be able to say that u is actually classical and it gives you a way of solving classical solutions as well. So, let us do it. So, I will be doing only for the Laplacian in thing, but then there are plenty of results for the regularity. It is a, a very deep industry uh, studying regularity results. Okay. So, the regularity of weak solutions. Okay. We have discussed a lot weak solutions. I will give a proof when it is a full domain and other domains and even upper half domain, but general domain I will uh, tell you some hints about it. Okay. So, let me start with a theorem. Let u is in h 1 of r n. Such that minus Laplacian of u plus u equal to f in L2 of R n. Okay. Anything I am not even putting any conditions other than that. This is equation L2 f is in L2 of R n this equation is in the sense of distribution. Okay. Of course, uh, you can give other meanings. So, but we want only in the distribution sense that is enough. Then so, you started with a u in h 1 then u is in h 2 of r n and you have the estimate norm of u in h 2 is less than or equal to constant into norm of f in L 2. You can iterate this process further. I trade the process to get that is a some work is involved get if f is in h m of r n then u is in h m plus 2. So, you see you are getting one more you expect h is in m plus 1 but then you have your u in h m plus 2 of r n you get getting one extra and you have the estimate norm of u in h m plus 2 of r n is less than or equal to norm f in L h m of r n. So, 
uh, you can repeat this right if u is f is in c infinity then you can uh, see uh, uh, and you can derive many results maybe we will uh, uh, discuss it that later we will write. So, let me give you proof of this this proof is easy due to by Fourier transform. So, you take Fourier transform of the equation ok Fourier transform of the equation minus Laplace n of u plus u equal to f because you can take the Fourier transform because u is in L2 and uh, you, uh, as a number distribution or whatever it is. But then you write down this equation uh, minus Laplace n of u equal to u f minus u and this is in L2 that you understand even though you started with u is in H1. So, Laplace n is u is not in H uh, u is not in H2 you have, you have to prove that, but you get a minus Laplace n u this, that component you get basically you have to prove that d u by d x i is in L2 for uh, d square u by d x i d x j is in L2 for uh, every i n j, but what obviously implies is that minus Laplace n of u. Now, you can take Fourier transform. So, what we will give you is that mod xi square u hat. So, you take Fourier transform uh, is in uh, uh, once you take a Fourier transform you get f hat minus u hat u hat this is in L2 you see. So, that implies u hat is already in L2. So, that implies 1 plus mod psi square u hat is in L2. This is precisely the condition that uh, u is in H2 of R you see. and uh, uh, norm of u in H2 is same as norm of 1 plus mod psi square u hat in L2 L2 and uh, uh, that is less than or equal to constant into norm of f hat you see in L2 that is same as constant into norm f in L2 that is it. So, the first part now how do we iterate that process that is what we are telling. Now, assume f is in h 1. So, first level you assume that f is in h 1 iteration process iterate this is what I said. So, assume f is in h 1 and then you can write this implies my uh, differentiate minus u d u by d x i this you can see immediately you see plus d u by d x i e sin equal to d f by d x i you can do this this is in L 2 now ok. So, by theorem first part by first part of the theorem first part of the theorem theorem ok uh, d u by d x i is in h 2 that is what you have proved that is u is in h 3 and you get your estimate d u by d uh, is in h 3 and uh, norm of u in h 3 is less than or equal to that is just a repetition of norm of f in h 1 because the norm of d f by d x i is coming into picture. So, that is in h 1 of r. So, now that is a repetition that is fine. But when you go to so, let me write down the uh, theorem when you go to a upper half plane. So, this is in upper half plane 
upper half plane. This is slightly more involved because you do not have the full x and direction. So, so this is your thing ok. So, this is your r n plus, this is your r n minus identified with uh, x prime 0. So, any point here will be of x prime x n and this is your x n ok. So, what is the theorem? So, let me write down theorem let u is in h 1 naught. So, it is for a Dirichlet problem All right. Satis such, such that satisfies integral of grade u grade v over omega omega is r n plus. So, you have r n plus plus integral over u v r n plus. So, we have done the integration by parts of the equation equal to integral of f v for all v in h 1 naught of r n plus uh, okay. So, the same result. So, we will prove it for the first part then for f in h m of r n plus implies u is in h m plus 2 of r n plus and you have the estimate similar estimates h m plus less than equal to constant into norm of f ok. So, how do you prove that? So, so you use reflection. So, I use reflection here reflection ok. So, with a sign change not exactly reflection. So, you need a last time in, in the prolongations we are used here. So, I will uh, you have to prove the steps ok. So, define you need some challenge. So, you uh, I used a notation here I do not know maybe I will uh, I do not want to use tilde also. So, I use u plus only u plus of x prime x n is equal to u of x prime x n if x n positive and here I put a minus sign you need that minus of u x prime x n because you have to satisfy certain equation minus of x n if x n negative you see. So, this is what you want to define is not exactly as I said a reflection together with a minus or negative reflection you need that one. So, these are the step 1 you have to prove these are all exercises I will leave some small but trivial this way you will uh, comfortable with your solar spaces as well if you are not that. The first thing to show that first step which you can show basically you try to compute your du plus ok. So, you show that your u plus is h 1 of r f. So, you show that it uh, the same the reflection this negative reflection does not change it. So, basically you compute it compute uh, your d u plus by d x y that is what you want to do it. Once you know what this is you know that you are uh, you can write that in terms of the d u by d x y of the upper half plane that is what you do. The step 2 exercise ok yeah you have to work out anyway you have to work out if you want to learn. So, that is no meaning in me working out. 
so that you have this equation is satisfied you see minus Laplace n of u plus plus u plus is equal to f plus f plus is definition is similar ok. This is in L2 of course, so you satisfy that R n now. So, you can show that f plus is same definition same definition same definition and that is obviously in L2. So, that is not a problem the problem you show that this satisfies in the sense of distribution that is the point. So, you show that minus L plus n of u plus plus u plus equal to f plus in the sense of distribution and f plus is in L2 ok. <coughs> then apply first theorem that is all first theorem you get u plus e is in H2 H2 of R n and which the estimate u plus in H2 this is in R n less than or equal to constant into no f plus in L2 which will give you ok you once you compute it you will give you norm u in H2 of R n plus is less than or equal to constant into norm f in L2 of R n plus that is all these are all in R n ok. So, the slight difference comes when you iterate the process iterate the process that is where you are differentiation iterate the process the difference is here. That is an, uh, one way you have to think classically quite often even though it is a distributional derivative see when you are differentiating x 1 to x n you are differentiating these directions x prime x n. But then when you are differentiate because you want to see what is Laplace you know uh, whether you can take d u by d x i. So, if you look at the previous proof uh, you have this uh, equation you see this equation you have it right you have this equation ok you have this equation uh, that uh, this equation you have it you see and that is where the problem you cannot get it in the nth direction because when you are doing an in nth direction you have to take differentiation this side along that. So, understanding Laplace n of du by dx i plus du by dx i in the R n the direction that is means Laplace n of du by dx n will create problem, but there is no problem. So, it is easy to check easy to check. Uh, minus Laplace n of du by dx i this is straightforward du uh, u <coughs> no du by dx i correct du by dx i <coughs> equal to df by dx i that is not a problem and uh, not du du plus by dx i du plus by dx i this is in L2 of R n plus that you can get it easily that is what I said the differentiation this is true for all 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n minus 1 that is what the telling you get it. So, at the x n equal to 0 you may not have this uh, issue this you may have a problem. So, that is what I am trying to say. So, this will imply by theorem 1 by first theorem again first theorem d u plus by d x i is in h 2 you see h 2 of uh, r n 
for all 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n minus 1 equivalently u plus is no you do not get u plus is in h 3 yet because you do not know d u plus by d x n. So, that I cannot do, but you have that one, but you have to prove that. So, we will prove that in a directly from the equation. So, let us see whether I can write it here itself. So, you can, yeah, yes. So, this is a kind of thing. So, this is a trick. So, u d u plus by d x i is in h 2 implies you can take all the derivative. So, if I take your yeah, it is correct. So, so if I take the derivatives second derivative d u plus by so in particular I think the in particular you get it. So, let me remove this one. So, this is my uh, very clever way of doing a particular d u by d x i is in h 2 of r n plus for all 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n minus 1. To conclude u is in h 2 of r h 3 you need d u by d x n as well that is what you have to prove it. So, if I so that will imply so I can differentiate you see. So, this will imply if I take my d u by d, d square u by d x k j d x i. So, I am differentiating. So, it will reduce this is in h 1 that is fine h 1 of r n plus because I can differentiate and this is true for all 1 less than or equal to j this is true for all n, but for i it is less than or equal to n minus 1. Okay. Now, it is a just so for now you so, you have proved all the derivatives are also. So, you see it is all derivative for all j second derivatives are also in h 1. The only thing missing is when i equal to n and j equal to n because j equal to n and i equal to up to n minus 1 it is fine, but the only one missing missing d square u by d x n square you see that is the only thing missing, but then now you write it from the Laplacian u. So, what is your Laplacian? Laplacian is summation d square u by d x n square i square i equal to 1 to n. So, what you write? So, this will you write it d square u by d x n square is equal to u minus f and minus summation of d square because this you have already got it d square i by d x i square i equal to 1 to n minus 1 you see because all this is up to i equal to n minus 1 no issue the only thing when j equal to n and i equal to n ok. So, that is all from here and this is in h 1 is given to you h 1 of r n plus and that implies u is in h 3 and uh, r n plus uh, if, and the estimate and the estimate. Go through it you have to study fully and uh, in the last uh, 5 minutes uh, I will uh, just tell you the uh, general omega issue. So, let me write it as a theorem and then uh, theorem. As I said you have to go through it ok. The results are true, so true for domains, domains bounded open, bounded open omega of class C m plus 2 you need that much 2 regularity extra. If f is in h m of omega then u is in h m plus 2 of omega and 
u in h m plus 2 omega is less than or equal to constant f into h m of omega ok. In particular you apply the embedding if m greater than n by 2 then u is in c 2 of omega bar and hence u is a classical solution is classical. So, let me uh, tell you the some idea of the proof with m equal to 0. So, you start with m equal to 0. You can do this one. So, uh, before that uh, some remarks a couple of remarks and then we will come in. remarks. Similar results can be proved for Norman Neumann condition. Similar results can be derived for Neumann problem and another important thing you may see uh, you do not see such features in hyperbolic equation do not see such features in hyperbolic equations hyperbolic equations what we have discussed is are the smoothing effects smoothening we will not discuss much more than this smoothening effect. Uh, so, this uh, will tell you a, com a last comment at the end of it by uh, in the you can also consider more general second order equations. So, let me not do this one. So, everything will not have a So, the idea of proof idea of proof. So, you have your domain. So, there you have to classify the estimates interior estimates and boundary estimates. Interior estimates are relatively easy not that always easy and boundary estimates, but boundary estimates are always hard even in the classical case of uh, Perron's method etcetera you have seen that boundary estimate. So, you have to distinguish. So, basically you have a bounded domain here and then you boundedness and the compactness of the thing you can have these neighborhoods ok. That is the thing you will be doing. So, you will classify this is your bound u not no u 1 u 1 u 2 like that and then you have a neighborhood inside to cover everything and this is your u not and take uh, partition of unity take partition of unity Okay. So, you get some partition of unity phi i okay. say i equal to 0 to k and you can write your u as sigma phi i uh, yeah, phi, phi i u i equal to 0 to k. So, this is nothing but phi naught of u this is interior you separate it. 1 to k phi i of u. Yeah, so, this is interior. So, you see support of e naught u is in contained in u naught which is completely inside, but support of e j 
uh, phi i so port of phi i e is in uh, ui so that's all these are boundary this is interior interior you see that's what i say and you write an equation to, and i so i call this to be ui function ui ui is your phi i u and you uh, define uh, so you can actually see that minus your laplacian of u naught plus u naught is equal to uh, phi naught of f you can compute this so i will just write down here gradient of phi naught and gradient of u uh, minus laplacian of phi naught u and this is your g identify g which is in l2 of uh, uh, you know uh, which is in uh, uh, no, uh, yeah l2 of u naught you will get it you can do that one and then u naught has a support completely inside and you can extend your u naught uh, by 0 outside and then you can get uh, u naught tilde the extension by 0 minus u naught tilde plus u naught tilde equal to some g tilde in r n in l 2 of r n by extending and then apply your uh, thing to get regularity of that one. So, you write here. So, and you can get your estimates. Ideas are similar here, but you have to do it in a different thing. So, regarding this bound this is concerned what do you do you transfer to this case. So, you have to do this case here and then you have to do some sort of work here some extensions and all that and you can still write your equation because in R n plus the thing is that you transfer this equation here since I do not have time I do not want to skip it because I do not want to continue in the next class and you can extend here, but then there is an another proof what the proof I have given in R n plus is using the R n which is a given the proof using the Fourier transform uh, and then that same proof you are given. But look at the reference of Brazis, Ham Brazis and he has given a proof without using Fourier transform and that proof can be adopted to Q. So, you transfer here and then that Q plus you can give a proof of the uh, regularity and then this is gone via G and G inverse. So, you have this maps g and g inverse. So, from here you can via g you can come here to this uh, part and use that new proof different proof not the Fourier transform proof. Even R n plus you can give a different proof you can have a the reference of Brazis and you can still write your lap minus Laplace n of u i end of it you can write something like that minus Laplace n of u i equal to g tilde ok and uh, you can get uh, similar estimates. Uh, so, I think I, I will not uh, do further here and what one last remark with a one last remark probably here. So, this slightly uh, how do I say the remark. Uh, so, what you have seen is that you can derive regularity and in particular f is in L 2 of omega. Uh, you get uh, something like or f is in c infinity of omega. So, let me check in particular you can get if sub uh, in c infinity of omega you can get uh, u is in uh, the uh, c infinity of omega, but if you take choose omega any subset of omega that obviously implies u is in c infinity of omega. So, you can get local of course, you are getting global regularity and getting uh, from there you are deriving some slot of a local regularity, 
But the interesting final remark what I want to is that the, you do not need for this particular equation if f is in c infinity of omega that will this is an additional thing. So, you get uh, locally if you have a local smoothness you get a local smoothness and this property is known as hypoelliptricity. So, what do you say that elliptic operator has a hypoelliptic uh, property. Okay. So, wherever your uh, data f is smooth c infinity you get c infinity of omega property. So, the Laplacian is hypoelliptic, okay. but wave equation is not it will not give you smoothness in fact you smooth, but the heat equation you get smoothness. So, the heat equation in that respect shares the property of the elliptic operator uh, the smoothing property is there for the heat equation that kind of phenomena you will see anyway in the lectures. So, I will stop here. So, in the next uh, uh, maybe one or two lectures we will do uh, some uh, maximum principles. Thank you.